Afraid? I have information that may help. Hey, won't you go to the Dark Realm? There is no guarantee you will live. But if you do, great rewards await you. Okay, see you soon. So I've been playing Onimusha. Once upon a time, back in the late mid-90s, some people over at Capcom had the idea for a ninja-themed spin-off game to one of their flagship franchises. Sengoku Paiohazado was to be its title. A Resident Evil game set within an ancient Sengoku period-style house, filled up to the nook with booby traps, titty twisters, and breastplates. You would have been able to use shurikens, magical ninja scrolls, and other thematically appropriate shit, However, they had planned this boyo to be released on the Nintendo 64 DD. Which, if you don't know, was a filled disk drive add-on that failed because everyone was already looking forward to the next generation of consoles. And also, add-on sucked fuck. Go ask Sega. And so, the title was scrapped, renamed, replanned, and restructured, and really, this story has fuck all to do with Onimusha. My keys just fell. I don't know why. You know how back in Japan they always had those massive wars with the samurai and the Welcome to the rice fields, motherfucker! style hats? Well, our story begins during one of those wars, as it is also set within the Sengoku period and also plays very similarly to Resident Evil. We assume the role of a legendary swordsman called Samonosuke Akechi who, after having fought in said war, thus proving his big dickery, is sent a letter from someone indeed in need of some big dick dickery dicking. There's an evil castle, you see, where they eat their own maids and servants, and Somonosuke's potential girl Chan is being held captive within that castle, if her well-believed voiceover is to be believed at least. Something is wrong within the Inabayama castle. Some of the maids and servants have gone missing. And I fear that it might be the work of monsters. Oh no! Not monsters! If that isn't motivation enough though, some purple-faced man-guy from the dark makes your arms glow so you can go suck some souls. But more on that later. Anyway, as you may have already figured out, this is more or less Sengoku Biohazard, just with fewer traps and more demons. It even plays exactly the same, with the pre-rendered backgrounds that you navigate via tank controls, all the while doing puzzles that are so transparently traditional that it actually has the exact same puzzle what RE1, Code V, and RE7 have, where you need to get the weapon from the statue, but when you grab it, the door closes or some shit, and so you need to get a dummy weapon in order to replace it. But of of course, you first need to get the golden emblem and the silver emblem to open that one door with the emblem holes. And you also ready thine blade with R1 and use it with square just like Rezo, to make things decidedly less stiff. Though you dodge out of harm's way like a proper anime, block and parry doing all kinds of L1 trickery and even use some MP based magic spells with triangle. Not to mention the timing based stuff, like being able to perform special moves as you get hits in at specific times, like when an enemy is running towards you, or when they have their weapons held in a certain way, or the fact that you can kick <coughs> dudes to break guards and that Sammy automatically locks on and turns to your target. Hell, <laughs> the game even makes a distinction between attacks with or without pressing R1, as not doing so allows you to perform some lighter attacks. It's actually legitimately really quite cool. However, I do feel it worth pointing out that this isn't a game about combos at all. Your mode of interaction with it does not change contextually just as it does in Resident Evil. Of course, you do get some different weapons like a variety of blades like slow, strong and weak fast and even a fucking gun and bow and arrow, both with two types of ammunitions, but they still only involve you pressing square while holding down R1. This isn't Devil May Cry. It is Resident Evil with Samurai. So besides the setting and the more action-based gameplay, it needed one big extra mechanic to set itself apart from Resident Dino Cry. 
This comes in the form of the orb-sucking magic arm that you get from the face. Thing is, is that when a monster dies, his soul orbs come flying out of his body and scatter about the place. These orbs come in three types. Yellow orbs, which replenish a cheeky bit of HP. White orbs that fill up MP bar, allowing you to spam your OP AOE shit at bosses or in case of gank. And finally, red orbs, which are more or less a type of EXP in a way that can be spent on various upgrade thingies at save points. Now, to be fair, it's not so much an upgrade system per se as in that it's just you making your shit a little bit stronger by filling its red bar with red orbs. Though there is a bit more to it than meets the creepy oh my god it blinks hand eye. Thing is, is that you get three swords, each carrying their own element. There's a fire sword, a lightning sword, and a wind sword. Besides this, uh, allowing for the previously mentioned OP AoEs, Onimusha will also hit your ass with some colored doors that just so happen to be of the red, blue, and green varieties. Very mysterious indeed. Now, obviously, these are tied to your elements. All you need to do to be able to pass is switch to the elemental weapon in question, though there are some doors that'll become increasingly more globuly, indicating that a higher level of levelage is required of the applicable element. If that sounds like a massive ball ache to you, then... <laughs> I can certainly see why. I mean, while technically being inseparable, your sword and the element attached to it do have their very own upgradable levels. So, what well, if you spend all of your succulent points to level up a blade when suddenly you're prompted to glob up a two glob door? Well, enemies don't stay dead and tend to respawn rather liberally, meaning that you're essentially able to grind for points, which might also sound like a massive ball ache now that I think about it, but shut up, you done know. The amount of red orbs that you actually get is perfectly in line with the cost of your average upgrade, and dudes will also drop health orbs every so often, so it's not like you'll end up burning through all of your finite resi resources either. If anything, those are best kept around for bosses who can easily have your HP bar should you get careless. Which is not something you ever want to do. Unlike the game that Onimusha clearly took inspiration from, Spyro, your orbs don't come flying towards you as once required to hold down circle to let them flutter in your general direction slowly, given that they haven't already drifted off screen at least. You can't walk at all while you're doing that either, mind you, so get ready to get fucked up the ass the moment you start sucking dudes in the heat of battle. Which, <laughs> it's quite a cool mechanic, not gonna lie. It creates moments where you quickly need to choose between gathering points and taking damage or running away to gather, thus risking respawnage. Add to that a neat little finisher mechanic, what you can perform on those floor bound that also requires you to stand in place. And yeah, there's quite a lot to consider, basically, especially during those HP having boss fights. It's like being able to suck HP and grind does alleviate some tensions that the Resident Evil games have at all times due to its trivializing of normie damage, but on the dick flip, the amount of findable herbs is pretty fucking low, nor do the bosses drop a whole lot of HP orbs mid-battle either. And even better is the fact that you're able to upgrade said herbs as well with your red orbs to make the more potent medicine pouches. So. Basically, you have quite a fucking lot to worry about as you keep up this constant balance between going all out action game and maintaining a conservative and careful resi frame of mind. Thus, making this otherwise simple little action game pretty fucking engaging. Huh? Didn't know humans could be such pests! <laughs> Top of the line voice work. About one hour in, there's a sequence that shows this off really, really well. See, here is where you fight your first boss, and <laughs> he's quite the tough little princess. After I just barely managed to kill him though, I very desperately wanted to save my fucking game so I could put this harrowing experience behind me. How could I die? By the hand of a human! Oh! Only his fat ass smashed the fucking door leading to it, and the other door had globs on it. Globs for a spell that I didn't have, and so, with anxiety up the bum, I had to venture forth into the unknown, where I quickly met the best girl. Oh, yes, 
it is indeed true. Now, let me show you my most recent creation. <laughs> Who then proceeded to introduce a new fucking enemy? Was it another boss? Is he strong? What's his gimmick? I don't know. Fuck. Oh, acting. Alrighty, <laughs> the game had very much sucked me in here. The combat is quite beefy as it is with its 70s kung fu action movie sound effects and visceral blood splatters, but the fact that the entire boss victory that I just had was being put into question already tipped shit right over the edge into Foxville. Naturally, I did beat the bitch, got the magic thing to open the door, but not before the game had to shove one more new enemy up my flipping dickhole. All of which making the save while I saved thereafter the most satisfying save ever saved. And that's just what the game starts you off with. Actually, it doesn't really do this too often from here on out, to be honest, as with the resi level structure, one's pretty much always able to backtrack to at least one safe point or another, nor is it anywhere near as unforgiving due to the yellow orb droppage, but just the potential of something happening like this again kept me edging my ass off for the entire fucking thing. Though, in terms of raw combat, it isn't exactly the most complicated game. Tension, though there may lie in its uncertainty, once you get the grips with it simply being a game about blocking when you need to and attacking during the well-telegraphed openings, you'll be decking most bosses on your first or second try rather effectively. It's quite reminiscent of the better fights seen in 3D Zelda games, or even Dark Souls. Like, the stakes are high and dudes do a lot of damage, so nailing a single block always feels like a small victory in and of itself, thus releasing mad endorphinage when you get the mala bitch straight after. And of course, everything I just went over with the orbs and the save cucking adds to this in droves. The only thing that kinda shits in the parade a little bit is its Resident Evil husk. Now, don't get me wrong, I dig the vibes, but by the time dudes are attacking you from off screen or when you keep running into things because of the abhorrently slow turning arc, or when you can't see your own fucking character because he's too far off from the camera, it kinda starts to obstruct the combat just a tad. Again, not too much because of the auto turny to your enemy lock on stuff, but it does still take away from certain fights and moreover, it makes the movement outside of combat a bit more awkward than it had to be as well. In a way, it feels to me like they weren't entirely sure what type of game they were making. It sits pretty comfortably in the same corner that Dino Crisis 2 sat in in that respect. Being that it's just like Resident Evil, but that that likeness also holds it back at that, whilst somehow also making it one of the more simplistically fun and engaging action games around. You know, I should probably explain that, because <laughs> I don't think that made any sense. Okay, so the presence of resi puzzles, for example, keeps the game from becoming monotonous, except when you're stuck on one nest, then it makes the game exactly that due to the respawning enemies. Or how about the music and the atmosphere and the gore-ridden body horrors really trying to hammer home that this is a horror game, you guys, trust me, only you fuck everything up no problem, thus rendering the spooks moot. I'm just kinda needlessly picking away at the game at this point, I guess. As these issues really are minor, and truth be told, I think that the gradual descent into body horror from what is essentially just a normal looking feudal game at the start is genuinely actually quite cool. Not that the story is at all serious or even good, but if you've played any Resident Evil game you know exactly what to expect with the spooky notes that uncover lore details and the plot that's so far beyond balls out that you just can't help but being entertained by it either way. Hell, the game even switches control over to Ninja Girl a few times, who can dodge like super fast and throw kunai at dudes and shit, and also as a lockpick thingy because of course. She's totally pointless, naturally, as she lacks the SHOCK power, so fighting as her is a complete and total waste of time, but it's still fun. Because this game is fun. And they even fucking reused the goddamn Resident Evil DualShock Edition basement trumpets. Oh my god, holy shit. Truly the mark of a great game, man.